In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own cookbook using Canva um, and a template that I have already created in Canva to make it really quick and easy for you. So how this came about um, is that I unfortunately had to move my grandmother into a nursing home and while we were cleaning out her house, I came across a bunch of her old cookbooks. And by old, I mean like 50 plus years old. They're falling apart. There's no photos in them because they wouldn't have had printers back then. Uh, but they're all recipes that we've made over the years or some that I found that I was, oh, I forgot about that recipe, but I do like when she used to make that. So anyway, I was like, I want a copy of the cookbooks, but she only had one copy. And then I had relatives that wanted a copy as well. So I was like, okay, I need to digitize these. Normally I would do this in Affinity Publisher. However, um, because other people in my family wanted a copy of the recipes as well, I chose to do it in Canva. And the reason being is you can then send a link to other people and they can create their own version, um, which is the link that you would get if you purchase a template from me um, in my shop. And then they can also go and like customize it however they want changing like font style, font colors, changing out the pictures, deleting recipes they don't like, adding recipes that they want in there. I mean, fully customize it, rearrange the pages, delete ones that you don't need. Um, so it just makes it a lot easier when you're sharing it with um, especially non like tech savvy people. And because there is a free version of Canva, um, which this template will work in. So uh, what to include in your cookbook? I do have a blog post which will be linked down below which will give you some suggestions of things that you might like to include. Um, but for me, I have a cover page and because I can never just have one design, I was experimenting with um, a lot of different ones and I have put in some photos so you can see how it looks finished. But the template you receive will be this exact one here with all the blank um, templates that you can add and customize however you want. So you can see there is quite a lot of them. And then at the end of the template is like the pre-created ones that you can see how a finished product would look. And it also has some of my favorite recipes in there that you can use to start off your own cookbook. So you might want to have a, well, you want to have a cover page. You might want to have an about page. So I did a page with a picture of my grandma and then talked about, you know, these are the recipes from, I don't know, 50, whatever, however many years ago it was that she was making them with her mother, etc. Then I had a contents page. You can choose to go as detailed or as brief as you like. You can also add hyperlinks in Canva if you want to, to make it clickable. If you did want to keep this as a digital recipe book. Um, otherwise, if you want to print it out, don't worry about doing the hyperlinks because um, obviously it won't be really relevant. Uh, I also wanted a kitchen conversions page because I do a lot of American recipes and they put things in like ounces and weird um, metrics for me because I like to just use cups and I don't like to weigh things. So I did want a kitchen conversions just to make it a lot easier. I also find a lot of American recipes use buttermilk, which isn't really a thing here in Australia. So I wanted some substitutions in there as well. So I've got a quick reference chart, make it easy for me to find what I need. I also added in some uh, meal planners. So I just gave one example in the template, but I actually did um, a bunch of like pre-made meal plans that I can then refer back to um, later on, just make it a lot easier. I did a cooking tips page. Um, I'm still yet to master melting chocolate perfectly um, in the microwave, but anyway, I put a little how-to guide in there, things like why she's use buttermilk, how to make self-raising flour, just tips and things like that uh, for me to refer back to. You can add whatever you like in here. I only added a few things on this page, um, and then I jumped to the next section, but if you did want to add extra copies of any pages in this template, you just click this sign here the plus sign and then you can start customizing it however you like. So I'll show you quickly how to customize one um, and then I will show you how to do a recipe card um, from scratch. It doesn't take very long at all. So for this one I just use some of the images that are in Canva, um, some of the free images. So let's say um, you want to use milk and then you can search photos and you can see it's literally giving you milk. So let's say I wanted to replace this image here with this one. You can left click and drag it in. Now keep in mind that if it's got this little crown here, this means pro. So that's the paid version of Canva, um, which I have. So if you do not have the paid version of Canva, it will be a little Im limited in what images appear. So things like you could use this one, which obviously is not as pretty, but hey, it still works. So if you do want to um, fill out your sort of general pages like this with some um, stock images, maybe get some off the internet and then you just drag and drop them in this like upload section and you can put it in your template that way. Uh, but if you are making a cookbook that you are going to sell, then um, you might want to upgrade to the pro version because the images are a lot better. 
Okay, so then we have some sections. You can put whatever images you like. So I made a mix of recipe cards. So sometimes I'll have a quick recipe that only needs one page. Sometimes it will be a little more involved and I'll need two pages. So I did a variety and you can mix and match whatever you want. You might also want some pages where you have the photos of each step in the direction. So there's pages for that as well. So I gave a variety and you can pick and choose whatever you like. Each of the recipe cards has a little rating section. So if you want to rate it, at the moment I've given this recipe 4 out of 5. If you want to make it 5 stars, you just drag this little slider here. If it's anything less than 3, I kind of wonder why you've got it in your cookbook to begin with. So you'll probably have 4 or 5 stars against pretty much everything. Um, and you can see that I used a simple and easy to read font. It's very clear. It prints really nicely as well on this white background. It's just very easy to see. On all of the recipe cards, I include a link to the URL where the recipe has come from because I always like to keep a record of that so I can find it again or link it to someone um, if they are asking for the recipe. And then I did a mix of like black backgrounds. The whole thing is basically in black and white other than obviously recipe photos because I wanted to keep it quite minimalist and then the focus ends up being all on the photo of the recipe. So there's plenty of examples and different you know, layouts and things in here, which you can have a look at later on if you choose to purchase it or it's in the um, listing here, which I'll have the link for down below as well and from my shop. But let's go ahead and make a recipe card. So this one here is the one that I'm going to do, which is a very yummy fudgy chocolate brownie cookie recipe. Yes, I have made this way too many times. So I have the recipe open um, from the website that it came from. So you can either duplicate um, a template that I've already like filled out with the photos and all the instructions and everything, or you can go back to the original um, page in the book. So I have my little recording thing here in the way, but there is four little squares in Canva where you can see the summary view of your cookbook and quickly find the recipe card that way. Uh, because I have my little recording happening to do this video, it's currently covering it. So we will just find it manually and you can get a little preview of all of the recipe cards that are included as we scroll to find it. Okay, this one here. So first things first, I'm going to copy the recipe name. You can obviously name whatever you want, but I like to keep the name that the creator of the recipe has given it. So I've just copied and pasted using control C and control V on my keyboard. It'll probably be, I think it's command, um, something like that. If you have a Mac, I don't use Mac. And then to resize the text, I just press control A and I'm just going to put it back to say 30, maybe 35, not too long. Let's go 30. And I'm going to copy the recipe URL. When you copy it, just double left click at the end of the recipe source and paste it. Otherwise, if you double left click over words, it becomes a hyperlink to that web page, which if you're making a digital cookbook, maybe you want to do that. But for me personally, I'm going to be printing mine. So I would rather just have the full um, URL in there. It doesn't need to be hyperlinked. The ingredients. So I love when recipe websites have this little jump to recipe section. I can just go straight away, copy and paste it. This already has um, dot points set up, so I just go right click, paste without formatting, just get rid of that type here text, and then I delete any of these that obviously I don't need. This one fits neatly on the page, but if you had it extending down below here, you can press Control A and then resize it all in one go. So maybe you need to go down like 10, or maybe you want to go up to 15, or if you're making a cookbook for you know someone elderly or a kid or someone, you might want to go big font. For me personally, I find about 12 to 13 is, is the sweet spot. This is an 8.5 by 11 inch page size. You can resize the cookbook if you have the um, Canva Pro version using the magic switch function. However, it's not perfect. It's <laughs> The magic isn't quite there. Um, I prefer to just do it via my printer menu. So I have some screenshots and instructions for that in the blog post that will accompany this video as well. You essentially just tick a box that says fit to page after you've chosen what size you want to print it at. So I'm in Australia and we use A4. So I'll just choose A4, tick the box fit to page. It prints out perfectly. Um, I've got plenty of margin for using with my arc disbound punch. Um, it just, it works so much better than trying to Stuff about in Canva with the magic switch function. Just resize it in your printer menu. It's so much easier. 
Okay, so then for the directions, now one of the main reasons why I prefer to do recipes in my format is because I find that recipes can have a bit of fluff in them, and I don't like fluff. I just want clear, to the point directions that are spaced out really easily. I cannot stand long-winded explanations. It drives me nuts. So things like this, preheat oven. Okay, that's one step. So I want this as a separate step. Or maybe I don't. I know that I'm baking cookies, so I don't need someone to tell me to line the baking trays. Like I'm just going to automatically do that. So maybe I'll just delete that. The template will have the text by default directly under each other, but for me that gets a bit um, clunky to read. So I actually like to have a space in between. But if we do that, you can see that it drops the numbering. So if we go one. And then two, it also gets rid of the indent. You can keep the indent if you want, but I like to have the maximum amount of text on my page. So I personally don't mind just renumbering it a little bit in order to get my space, but up to you. So you can paste in your recipe. If you had a longer recipe, you might split it into um, sometimes like for meatballs, I'll have the sauce on one page and then I'll have like the meat instructions for cooking it on the second page and if I'm making a cake um, I might have just like my go-to buttercream icing recipe that I'll pull out and have that side by side next to the cupcake recipe or whatever I'm making so there's a few two page layouts in here as well um, the other thing that we need to change is the cook time so we've got 12 minutes you could make this the cook plus the prep time if you want so if you total 22 I'll leave that up to you put whatever you want there and then the number of servings so this makes 16 cookies so let's update this to 16 okay now the last thing we need to do is add in our um, image so pick an image that you like on the website also think about what recipe template you have chosen you'll notice when we were scrolling through this one has a fairly small portrait uh, photo but some of them have horizontal photo so just think about that when you're choosing what image to take from the website you can crop the image though and adjust it and move it around once you put it into this little um, cloud sky grass template thing in canva um, but just keep that in mind so like this one would be a good one to pick this one not so much because it's too zoomed in this one would be another good one to pick because it's a bit further out. Anyway, pick whatever image you, that you like. You would go right click, save image as, and you would save it to your computer. I tend to just dump it in my downloads folder. Um, and then you can left click and drag it from your downloads folder into Canva. You can see that I've uploaded a few. There's the one that I took from the website. Just left click and drag and drop it in. And then our recipe is done. You can choose to do page numbers in your cookbook, but I don't really see the point. Um, I would prefer to just list out my table of contents um, to go in the order that they appear. And then I just arrange them in like plastic folders or arrange it in my ARC notebook, whatever I'm using in that same order. Um, so I would just actually have, I did it in my other one. I'll just zoom out. You can have a table of contents for the whole book, but I actually um, do it by section. So I'll have like all my chicken recipes and I'll have a contents page, all my slices like this. This is the one that I used for my cookbook. And you can see I had a lot of <laughs> sweet baking recipes. Um, and then I just listed them out in the order that I then arranged them afterwards in the cookbook. And that just saves stuffing around with like page numbering. I hate doing all of that. Um, so anyway, that's one option for you. Um, so I didn't really have anything else I think to show all oh, the fonts so if you want to change the fonts um, click on any existing text you can also left click and drag to select multiple and if you press the shift key you can then select more and you can change it from the font that I used in the template to something else um, I wouldn't recommend using more than two different fonts so for desserts we might use a cursive font and then have a simple like officey block type font sans serif for everything else on the page and if you want to do different colors I would probably just do one color for your heading and then keep black or maybe a dark gray for the colors for everything else so let's choose a different font let's just go uh, what's a good one 
I don't normally use cursive fonts anymore, actually. I tend to just stick to the uh, sans serif ones. Let's pick this London font. Loading. Now, you see that it doesn't quite work out neatly, so you might need to do some adjustments of changing like font size, for example. I have got the template set up so that it automatically goes to the edges of the page and it will keep the center alignment so you don't have to do all that. You would only need to change the font size. Another cool thing in Canva, which actually thinks more magical than their magic switch tool, is the change all function. So if you are changing an existing color or changing an existing font, if you click this change all button, it will go through the template and change every single instance where you have used text with that font to the new font. So it's really quickly, uh, easy to quickly change things and see how they would look instead of like clicking every single little thing and changing the font. Maybe you go, actually, no, I don't like that one. Well, it's quick to just click on another one and then see how that one looks. So that is a really good tool in Canva and then you can start to make it look you know unique and more to your personal style or your brand or whatever you want to do like I like that one so that was it for this tutorial I hope you found it helpful if you would like a copy of the template it's available in my shop I'll have the link down below um, it's ADs if you're in the US then it's only $6.70 Anyway, if you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll have the blog post where pretty much everything that I said is in a summarized format. If you don't want to come back and watch this video again, I have screenshots um, of things like changing the font and all that as well. So just quick reference if you need it.